Welcome to the 10th episode of Fintech Monthly. To celebrate reaching double figures, we're here at GoCardless's gorgeous offices in Islington. This month, we bring you stories of two huge funding announcements, Barclays have done a deal with a Bitcoin startup, and there's some expertise garnered at Innovate Finance's event during London Tech Week. We start the episode with news of two huge investments in London-based fintech companies, with both Asimo and Currency Cloud bagging the big bucks. Money transfer company Asimo raised $20 million in a round led by Frog Capital, and the company are now valued at just under $100 million. Currency Cloud aren't far behind, raising $18 million in a round led by Sapphire Ventures and Rakuten. These investments mean that it's been a huge month for payments, which was rather apt, especially as the 16th of June was the UN's official International Family Remittance Day. Barclays have started working with Swedish company Cefelo to create a system that enables payments to be sent to charities using Bitcoin. This partnership has come about as a result of the Barclays Techstars Accelerator program which allowed 10 financial technology companies to work closely with Barclays over a 13-week period. Soon after the accelerator ended, Barclays and Cefelo put pen to paper. Barclays and Techstars have now collaborated on two programmes in London and obviously deemed the project a success. So much so, the veil will be lifted on the New York incarnation in July of this year. It was London Tech Week earlier this month and Innovate Finance thought the time was right for a fintech takeover. As we're halfway through 2015, we caught up with some fintech experts and asked them what the big trends in financial technology will be this side of Christmas. So in the past in the UK there was a huge array of financial advisors and that is getting ripped to shreds and that creates a real advice gap. That is a gap that can definitely be solved with software. So Nutmeg are playing at that in a way. Crowdcube is another outlet for people to invest their money and get good returns. Um, but I think there's a, a huge investments industry in the UK and it's taking people on that journey from their first cash ISA through to a much more complex portfolio. That I think will create a bunch of interesting startups over time. Clearly you've seen the transfer of money that's been looked at quite clearly. There's a lot of talk about blockchain. You know, one area that we're very keen to look at, uh, see happen and evolve is the pensions market. Um, I think if you look at companies like Nutmeg, they're looking at this uh, very closely. Technology is looking at uh, disrupting many parts of the financial services industry. In fact, it's making it even more accessible. So if you look at the companies like Funding Circle, uh, you're making people become a lot closer to the market. And that's a good thing for this space to continue growing. Well, I think one of the biggest trends to come out of the fintech space is insurance. We ran a reverse insurance hackathon as part of London uh, Tech Week this week. A subscription of 30 people to come to the initial hackathon, we ended up with more than 80. And there's a real passion to, to start embracing fintech. They're setting up corporate accelerators, internal innovation programs. So I think it's the, it's safe to say it's the early stages of a, a base formation of a trend breaking out and that we'll see insurance and fintech really take off in the next six months. Clearly insurance is a sector that cannot be ignored. So we caught up with expert Richard Gold of Rag Lawrence Graham & Co to ask him why we haven't seen quite so many startups in the insurance field as we have in other sectors. If you look at the whole financial services landscape, then insurance really is the last bastion of the old world of financial services. There isn't a great deal of disruption there, and that's due to a number of factors. It's highly regulated, it's very complex, and the amount of capital required to build alternative insurance platforms is quite staggering. However, we are beginning to see some really interesting peer-to-peer -peer insurance businesses coming through. I think that's going to really be quite disruptive in the industry. For more from Richard Gould, check out his regular posts on techcitynews.com. Software provider Intelligent Environments has developed a passcode system that is based wholly on emojis. Intelligent Environments claim that the emoji system is far more effective than traditional methods as there are far more potential combinations of emojis than there are of the numbers between 0 and 10. This makes passwords generated using their system statistically much harder to crack than numerical systems. However, memory expert Simon Tipper recently warned against using basic memory tactics to remember your emoji-based password. As if you use the four emojis in the four corners of your phone screen, for example, your password's as easy to hack as your dog's date of birth. 
An old piece of banking technology is being used to distribute clean water in Nairobi, the humble ATM. The Kenyan government have installed four water ATMs in the Mathari area. Local residents are able to draw a ration of clean water from the machine by simply swiping their smart card. Before the introduction of the ATMs, the only option was to purchase water from a cartel of vendors that used to charge 50 Kenyan shillings for 20 litres of water. Now the ATMs distribute the same amount of water for less than half the price. Thank you for celebrating our 10th episode with us. For more fintech updates, check out techcitynews.com. I've been Ben Goldsmith, and see you next month.